Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless luke 21 26 through 28 men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of the heavens will be shaken then they will see the son of man coming in a cloud with power and great glory now when these things begin to happen look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near My name is Ryan Fobbs Graves, and I'm a former F-18 pilot with a decade of service in the U.S. Navy. My name is David Charles Grush. I was an intelligence officer for 14 years, in the, both in the U.S. Air Force, at the rank of major, and most recently at the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. My name is David Fravor. I'm a retired commander in the United States Navy. Now, those three men testified before Congress today, revealing shocking details about what we call UFOs, but the government calls UAPs or unidentified aerial phenomena. Now, for decades, these men served our country with honor, and no one at that bipartisan hearing today called into question their integrity or their credibility. But the testimony, it has to be taken seriously. UAP are in our airspace, but they are grossly underreported. These sightings are not rare or isolated. They are routine. Military aircrew and commercial pilots, trained observers whose lives depend on accurate identification, are frequently witnessing these phenomena. I was informed in the course of my official duties of a multi-decade uh, UAP crash retrieval and reverse engineering program. The technology that we faced was far superior than anything that we had. You're talking something that can go into space, go someplace, drop down in a matter of seconds, do whatever it wants and leave, and there's nothing we can do about it. Nothing. They even talked about some of the G-forces that they've seen, which in simplest terms, it's when you feel your body accelerating against gravity. What about G-forces? Let's talk about G-forces of those vehicles. Could a human survive those G-forces with known technology today? No. No, not for the acceleration rates that we observed. And some of the claims were quite literally out of this world. If you believe we have crashed craft, uh, stated earlier, do we have the bodies of the pilots who piloted this craft? Uh, biologics came with some of these recoveries, yeah. Um, were they, I guess, human or non-human biologics? Non-human, and that was the assessment of people uh, with direct knowledge on the program I talked to that are currently still on the program. Now, what I think everybody wants to know at this point is how has all of this been happening without the public discovering it and without the government being, frankly, totally transparent on what has gone on all these years with all the claims of conspiracy theories now we're learning it just now well this exchange does provide a bit of an answer do you have knowledge or do you have reason to believe that there are programs in the advanced tech space that are unsanctioned uh, yes i do yeah. how does a program like that get funded i will give you generalities i can get very specific in a closed session uh but a mis misappropriation of funds and uh does that mean that does that mean that there is money in the budget that is said to go to a program but it doesn't and it goes to something else yes i have specific knowledge of that yep yeah it's all fungible it's your it's your money taxpayers but they can just pick it out of any pot they want because it's all together well don't expect this lack of transparency to be turned around anytime soon though Certainly not from this White House. Uh, David Grush, who sat on a U.S. Air Force panel on UAPs, he says that he was informed of a UAP crash retrieval and reverse en engineering program based on interviewing 40 witnesses over four years. Does such a program exist, and do you believe that the American people deserve to know if it does? I have no information on that uh, to provide for you today, one way or the other. One way or another. Well, as astounding as it is to hear these revelations in an open congressional hearing, 
the claims of intimidation, the claims of harassment to keep this story hidden from the American public, that may be actually the biggest bombshell here. I do have knowledge of um, active planned uh, reprisal activity against myself and other colleagues. There were certain colleagues of mine that were brutally administratively attacked. I call it administrative terrorism. That's their, their quiver, their tool in the toolbox uh, to silence people. This suppression campaign may have gone much further than administrative action, though. Do you have any personal knowledge of people who have been harmed or injured in efforts to cover up or conceal these extraterrestrial technology? Yes. Personally. Have you heard, have anyone been murdered that you would think, that you know of or have heard of, I guess? I have to be careful asking that question. I directed people with that knowledge to the appropriate authorities. Uh, it's not just intimidation, action. These accusations, they demand immediate investigation because, you know, we're funding this. We, the people, have a right to know what our government is hiding from us and these tactics to cover up and, and, and you know, retaliate against anyone who's speaking out on the issue. It couldn't be of any greater importance. And we've seen this happen time and again throughout our government. It's why people don't trust the government. This is not just a national security emergency. This is an emergency of trust, our trust in the government itself. Could an alien deception be the strong delusion God sends on an unbelieving and unrepentant world in the last days? Recently, interest has been rising in the theory that an alien deception will be part of the end times. Odd as it may seem, this theory is entirely plausible from a Christian perspective. Although the Bible gives us no word about whether or not aliens exist, there is no inclusion of them in the creation account in Genesis, and no mention of them elsewhere. The Bible does tell us about visitors from another world, the spiritual world, as we read in Ephesians 6.12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. According to a National Geographic survey, 77% of all Americans believe there are signs that aliens have visited Earth. According to a recent Harris poll, only 68% of all Americans believe that Jesus is God or the Son of God. That means that the number of Americans that believe that UFOs have visited us is now greater than the number of Americans that believe what the Bible has to say about Jesus Christ. With each passing year, the frequency of UFO sightings seems to keep increasing, as does the number of movies, television shows, and video games featuring aliens and extraterrestrial life. It is almost as if the population of the planet is being primed for something. Could this phenomenon be the strong delusion of the last days that is talked about in the Bible? 2 Thessalonians 2, 9-12 The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason God will send them strong delusion, that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Why is God sending a strong delusion? The Bible makes it clear. They perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. Simply put, God sends a strong delusion to those who choose not to believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. The prophet Isaiah puts it succinctly, Just as they have chosen their own ways, and their soul delights in their abominations, so will I choose their delusions, and bring their fears on them. Because when I called, no one answered. When I spoke, they did not hear, but they did evil before my eyes, and chose that in which I do not delight. The rapture is a familiar concept to most Christians and non-Christians alike. While they may not believe it, and they may even laugh at it, many non-Christians know that all the Christians believe that they are supposed to somehow disappear before the end of the world. Satan would seem to have a problem. How would he be able to explain away the fact that every person who was a Christian has suddenly disappeared? It would seem like a huge wake-up call to the world that the Christians were right after all. It is becoming more and more clear what Satan's solution to this dilemma is. He will answer this preposterous idea, the rapture, with another preposterous idea, an alien deception. When thinking of the peculiar things of the world, the New Age movement tends to come to mind. Psychics, mantras, astrology, and crystals are some of the symbols of this diverse group of the extremely spiritually deceived. Another topic that has always interested New Agers has been UFOs and extraterrestrials. In the past, the idea that UFOs were real was relegated to the fringe. In recent years, however, several scientists have come to the conclusion that extraterrestrials are statistically probable. One of the leading astrophysicists, Stephen Hawking, states that aliens are real and possibly dangerous. Christians must deal with this from a biblical worldview and not be caught up in the deception that UFOs are anything but agents of the Prince of the Power of the Air, aka Satan. 
God is very real, angels are very real, and the enemy is also very real. In an article by a former New Age participant, Jim Sales describes a prevailing belief among New Agers. Sales describes what Israeli psychic Yuri Yeller said, extraterrestrials would not interfere until, in a single night, at the peak of the conflict, they would remove millions of humans who resist this initiation into a higher spiritual consciousness and re-educate them before returning them to Earth a few years later. Another article quotes Barbara Marciniak in her book Bringers of the Dawn as saying, The people who leave the planet during the time of Earth changes do not fit in here any longer, and they are stopping the harmony of the Earth. When the time comes that perhaps 20 million people leave the planet at one time, there will be a tremendous shift in consciousness for those who are remaining. Geller and Marciniak's quotes sound quite familiar to Christians. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 through 18 tells Christians they will disappear from the earth someday. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. The source of this information in both cases, Yuri Geller and Barbara Masiniak, is described as being from psychic contact with extraterrestrials. This is not something New Agers have invented. It comes straight from the mind of Satan, disguised as an alien. This has been communicated to them, and will possibly be the explanation for the rapture of the church, i.e., those who do not fit into the earth anymore, those who resist the initiation into a higher spiritual consciousness, the troublemakers. Are you a troublemaker? I hope so. Since we've been talking about the rapture, this whole week it's been heavy on my heart. It's been heavy on my heart that people aren't gonna make it. It's been heavy on my heart that people aren't gonna take Jesus seriously. That he's given us so much to cling to, so much to rely on, so much to have faith in. But when we don't believe, we just might not make it. So we gotta ask ourselves, are we ready? If you ask me if I believe in Jesus, the answer is yes. And if you ask me why, well, because he came back, but I didn't go. Don't get left behind. Call upon the name of Jesus today. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, 
we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Tonight, India's ban on exporting different varieties of non Batsmati rice, <laughs> triggering panic buying across the U.S., people stocking up, clearing shelves and waiting in long lines as many stores from coast to coast limit sales and hike prices, in some cases more than twice as high. There is no rice in the stores, basically, after the ban. It was so crowded. Some stores, like there are people who are waiting for like 100, 200 people waiting in the lane. Experts say the culprit, climate change. The Indian government announcing the ban after torrential rains and flooding devastated crops in the northern region of the country, sending prices in India soaring, citizens paying nearly 12% more. Indian officials say it's a measure taken to ensure supply domestically and keep costs at bay, but it's a move felt across the world. Something as far away as the monsoon in India you know, will affect your grocer in your hometown here in the United States. India is the largest exporter of rice, shipping 40% of the world's supply to the more than 3 billion who depend on the grain as part of their daily diet. But it's also a key grain used in many of the items that we, we eat. It's a key ingredient uh, that's going to have a ripple effect. You know, we will see prices increase as we, you know, go to the grocer. We'll see prices increase when we go out to eat at the restaurants. You will not live your life without you know, being affected by this. The rice ban coming days after Russia pulled out of the grain deal with Ukraine, preventing millions of tons of food from leaving Ukrainian ports and reaching the rest of the world, bringing food supply in some countries to a breaking point. Some will go hungry, some will starve, many may die. An urgent warning from the United Nations as the devastating consequences of war and climate change are felt across the globe. We are currently living in a time Jesus refers to as the birth pains. We are fast approaching a time known as the tribulation that Jesus says will be the worst time in human history as we read in Matthew 24, 21. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time. No, nor ever shall be. We are currently witnessing events that will continue to become more frequent and more intense until God pours out his final judgments on an unbelieving and unrepentant world. One of the judgments described in the book of Revelation includes the price of food being so high and scarce that it will cost a full day's wages just to barely get enough to eat as we read in Revelation 6, 5, and 6. When he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come and see. So I looked, and behold, a black horse, and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius and three quarts of barley for a denarius, and do not harm the oil and the wine. In this prophecy, it will cost a day's wages just for a loaf of bread. We are not in the tribulation period yet, but we are getting extremely close. To the war in Ukraine and deadly missile strikes hitting the hometown of President Zelensky. The attack follows Ukrainian drone strikes in Moscow for the third time in a week. In President Zelensky's hometown at the site of a Russian attack just a few hours ago. As you can see, it isn't a military target, but a residential apartment block. It was struck early this morning when many people were still inside. We know that a number of people have been killed and over 40 have been injured, including a number of children. 
The attack here happens just one day after that dramatic drone strike on Moscow on Sunday. Videos circulating online showing the moment that one UAV exploded at an office used by the Russian government. It was the third such strike on Moscow region in the last week alone. Russia blaming Ukraine. President Zelensky simply saying gradually the war is returning to the territory of Russia. And here on the battlefield inside Ukraine, more advances for the Ukrainian armed forces. And perhaps a sign that Russia is starting to feel the pressure. Former Russian President Dmitry Medvedev repeating threats about using a nuclear weapon if Kyiv's counteroffensive is successful. A meeting of leaders from China, Russia and North Korea featured Kim Jong-un showing off ballistic missiles that could hit the United States. The meeting got the attention of Western leaders. Chief National Security Correspondent Jennifer Griffin has details tonight from the Pentagon. To mark the 70th anniversary of the armistice that halted the fighting but not the Korean War, Kim Jong-un hosted the Russian defense minister and a representative of the Chinese Politburo, showing off his latest weapons, including intercontinental ballistic missiles. Call it the axis of autocrats. For the first time since Russia's invasion of Ukraine, Russia's defense minister, Sergei Shoigu, is in Pyongyang to meet with the North Korean despot. Shoigu is thought to be in search of weapons. Putin is reaching out uh, to other countries for help and support uh, in fighting his war in Ukraine, and that includes, we know, uh, some outreach to the DPRK. Mr. Putin knows he's having his own uh, defense procurement problems, his own inventory problems. North Korea's defense minister expressed Pyongyang's full support for what he termed Russia's battle for justice in Ukraine. The new head of U.S. Space Command was asked about the North Korean threat at his confirmation hearing. Do you believe that the United States should continue to posture its homeland missile defense capabilities to stay ahead of the North Korean threat? Yes, Senator, I do. President Biden plans to hold a summit at Camp David in August with the leaders of South Korea and Japan. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin is visiting Australia and Papua New Guinea to reinforce those crucial military alliances. The White House just announced a $345 million military aid package to Taiwan, a message of deterrence as China and Russia meet in Pyongyang. Jen, another topic. What can you tell us about the military coup in Niger? Brett, the Pentagon is watching developments in Niger closely tonight. Niger was the last ally in the crucial swath of northern Africa known as the Sahel, which was working closely with the U.S. and France to fight al-Qaeda. Now, just like in Mali and Burkina Faso, Russia's Wagner Group is moving in, offering mercenaries and weapons in exchange for rare national, natural resources. Niger has vast uranium mines. Now we may have a better clue as to why Vladimir Putin spared Wagner head Yevgeny Prigozhin after his attempted coup. Putin needs Wagner mercenaries in Africa. Artificial intelligence experts are warning that our military is falling behind China on AI. Is America falling behind China on AI and weapons? Is it? Yeah, I think China's a little bit in the lead on this and because they've really focused in on the military aspect of it. You know, for everybody out there, remember that what we're really talking with AI is, is using machines to take the cognitive ability of your brain and put it into, into speed, into machine uh, to make things happen faster and, and quicker. We're now talking petaflops, Stuart. You know, that is 1,000 million million computations per second. You know, it's, you know, when I first started, it was with a slide rule and fingers and toes. And I go back to, there was a movie in 19, uh, it was 43 years ago, in 83, a movie called War Games. They let a computer take over nuclear exchange with, with Russia, the Soviet Union at the time, and it got out of control. One thing I would remind everybody, when you get into AI, you've always got to keep the man in the loop. If you let the machines take over with the speed they're doing and the speed they compute, it gets out of control really fast. Human beings can't be taken out of the control loop when you're talking weapons and missiles, yeah. can they? You can't have that. No, not at all. Stuart, that's my concern. My concern mm -hmm. is you let it go kind of like weapons free. You kind of let the machines take over. They should never do that because you're always trying to get inside somebody's decision loop. It used to be observe, orient, decide, act. That's what we used to call the OODA loop. And that's what you want to do is get inside their decision loop and what they're doing. And that's in the military sense. That's what AI is intended to do, to build that speed for decision making. But if you take the man or the person out of the loop, you've got a big problem. You should never let the machines take over in the military. Indeed. It is a very, very human reaction. In the last days, the book of Daniel prophesied that knowledge would increase. Daniel 12.4 But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. 
many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. Knowledge had to increase for future prophecy to be fulfilled. The biblical knowledge we have today is because of the increase in technology. This is a pretty good indicator that Christ will return very soon. There are many prophecies in Daniel's time that could not come to fulfillment because the technology had not yet been invented. That is why Daniel was told to shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. One of those prophecies is found in Matthew 24 verses 21 and 22. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Flesh is the Greek word sarx, which means flesh, body, human nature, especially a human being. Matthew 24, 22 can be translated like this. And unless those days were shortened, no human nature would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. If Jesus did not return and shorten the days, there would be no human nature saved. Either mankind will merge with artificial intelligence, or artificial intelligence will completely destroy mankind as the dominant species. I want to begin this half hour in Israel. Since the Jewish state's birth in 1948, wars have been a constant threat to its survival. Before the Israeli Knesset adjourned for its current recess, one group addressed the question, what measures can Israel take to weaken the terrorist groups that aim to wage war against it? Chris Mitchell brings us the story now from Jerusalem. Two members of parliament, one from the governing coalition and another from the opposition, hosted this meeting of the Israel Victory Caucus. They believe Israel should be more proactive and take steps to weaken its enemies to keep them from waging war against Israel. In the last 30 years, we've lost something. The Jewish people knew how to win battles. We knew how to win in 1948. No one asked himself if in 1948 Israel was established or not, if Israel won or lost. We knew how to win in 1967. But since the Oslo Accords, we forgot how to win. In the last few years, last 30 years, we're not winning anymore. And I think we should go back to winning. The Middle East Forum helped host the meeting. One aim is to stop wars before they begin. This is a united message which transcends politics and allows individuals to focus on defense as a priority for the state rather than as just being something which is a side policy issue. The policy towards Gaza, at least from what we're recommending to the government, is a complete disarmament of Hamas in Gaza, meaning that there is no ability for them to wage war against the Jewish state in the future. To achieve that goal, they released this policy paper on disarming Gaza, written by the former IDF chief of intelligence, retired General Yossi Kupavasser. My message is that we have to reassess our strategy towards Gaza. And uh, the strategy that we practice today allows Hamas to arm itself to its teeth in between the rounds of violence. This is against our interest because it makes Hamas not only stronger vis-a-vis -vis Israel itself and able to hit Israel everywhere as they wish and threaten Israel, we should adopt a new policy that after the next round of atrocities that Hamas should know in advance that after the next round of atrocities we should not allow it to rearm itself. Rabbi Leo D. also addressed the meeting. Earlier this year, his wife and two daughters were murdered in a terror attack. He appealed to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu not to fund or support what he sees as another enemy of Israel, the Palestinian Authority. And what happens is they're spending $300 million a year financing terrorists such as the family of those who killed my wife and daughters. Um, and they're also publishing uh, textbooks which uh, incite violence, uh, that uh, lord terrorists. And they're running summer camps at the moment where the kids are running around with banners with the pictures of the three murderers of my uh, wife and daughters uh, and uh, learning how to shoot and to stab Jews all over the world. Whether it's Hamas in Gaza or the Palestinian Authority, most agreed the next war is not a matter of if, but a matter of when. And they want Israel to be prepared to win. As a sign of his coming and the end of the age, Jesus declares, And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. The prophets of the Old Testament prophesied of these future military conflicts in Isaiah 17.1, in which Damascus, Syria will be destroyed in a single night. Jeremiah 49, the prophecy of Elam which could infer an Israeli attack upon Iran's nuclear program. Psalm 83, in which the Muslim nations that border Israel will mount an attack on Israel in order to cut them off from being a nation. Ezekiel 38 and 39, known as the War of Gog and Magog. In this prophecy, a coalition of nations led by Russia, Iran, and Turkey will attack Israel in the last days in order to take Israel's wealth. 
Wading through waist-high muddy waters, first responders in China's Shangxi province such as door-to-door -door pulling out residents to safety. Since torrential rain lashed the region, villagers have been trapped in their homes. Rescue efforts made difficult due to boats unable to navigate the narrow streets. Further east in Hebei province, firefighters raced to rescue trap drivers and passengers as the water continues to swell. And in the capital, Beijing, hundreds of bus services have ground to a standstill, with subway stations inundated. Authorities have raised the heavy rainfall alert in the region to the highest level, warning of floods, mudslides and landslides. China has been battered by the deadly storm dog Suri, which made landfall on Friday after sweeping the Philippines as a typhoon, bringing howling winds of up to 175 kilometers per hour. Over the weekend, the storm affected more than 880,000 people in coastal Fujian, forcing hundreds of thousands to evacuate and causing more than 478 million yuan, some 60 million euros in economic losses. China has been experiencing extreme weather conditions and has seen record temperatures this summer, events that scientists say are exacerbated by climate change. In some suburbs of Beijing, roads have become fast-flowing rivers. This was the scene on Sunday in Wuhan City after relentless rain since the weekend. This man stranded in his car in the gushing floodwaters was rescued by firefighters. Hundreds of roads have become flooded in the country's capital. Social media posts showed floating cars and road signs in Mentugu district being pulled along by fast-moving torrents. This is the remnants of Typhoon Doksuri dumped record rainfall on the city of nearly 22 million. Two bodies were found in a river during an emergency patrol in Mentugu as rescuers pulled hundreds to safety in other parts of the city. At least two people have been killed and hundreds trapped despite an overnight evacuation of tens of thousands from their homes. This mountain road in Gansu province in northern China crumbled away as flood water gushed against it. Emergency personnel created a rope bridge to evacuate two trapped workers. Another road in a village in Fangshan district collapsed amid the record rainfall. Hundreds of thousands of people were driven from their homes in the southern province of Fujian. Average rainfall in Beijing reached seven inches between Saturday night and Monday afternoon. The maximum recorded rainfall at a weather station in Mentugu hit 23 inches, according to state media. The extreme heat, millions of Americans still on alert, alert as the Northeast and Midwest sees a drop in temperatures following severe storms. What a weekend, 660 some severe storm reports in just the last 48 hours. Each of those blue dots, which is mostly damaging wind, showcases that you had a wind of 60 plus miles per hour. Now imagine having more this month than we've ever seen when it comes to wind damage and yet another day to go. This morning, a bit of relief for millions of Americans as severe storms help bring an end to the first official heat wave of the season for parts of the Northeast. A powerful line of storms swept through Virginia, Washington, D.C., and Maryland Saturday, gusts up to 84 miles per hour, knocking out power to more than 200,000 customers. Streets littered with fallen trees. It was a lot of wind and a lot of rain just pounding for, I don't know, like at least a half hour straight, I would say. A tree in the nation's capital shattering the windshield and crushing the roof of this car. Police in that state investigating a possible storm-related death of a 43-year-old man, reportedly killed after a tree fell onto his home. Another tree falling onto a house in Easton, Massachusetts, the work of an EF-1 tornado. My wife was actually on the porch filming the rain, and she turned her camera off. Within 15 seconds, that tree came down. And the extreme heat still scorching the South. More than 70 million Americans under heat alerts. Ambulances rushing to back to school events in Georgia, bringing 10 people suffering heat related injuries to the ER. Fire personnel treating 10 more on the scene. People started actually passing out and what have you. A dangerous heat dome punishing the nation. The last week of July, testing the metal of millions. It's miserable. I mean, I work outside, so it's just, it's even worse. In Denver, 90 degree days made for long nights for mom Amanda Morian. She's without air conditioning, just like 10% of Americans. They can't swaddle him at night because it's just too much. This raging wildfire jumped international lines from Washington State to British Columbia. So far, hundreds of fires across Canada have burned a landmass the size of Cuba. People across the U.S. are dialing 911 for help. 
The CDC's heat and health tracker shows the most ER visits last week were in the West, followed by the Southwest and the Florida Panhandle. You may have heard the phrase, God's hand of protection. It seems that it is something God would do, keep a person or nation in the shelter of his hand. It also seems logical to think that in his fierce wrath and anger that he would lift his hand. But is it biblical? Yes, it is. Jeremiah 18, 7 through 10. The instant I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom, to pluck up, to pull down, and to destroy it, if that nation against whom I have spoken turns from its evil, I will relent of the disaster that I thought to bring upon it. And the instant I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom, to build and to plant it, if it does evil in my sight so that it does not obey my voice, then I will relent concerning the good with which I said I would benefit it. In the news these days, we read about and see devastating events, each more unusual, destructive, and unprecedented than the last. They are happening more frequently and more intensely, just as the Bible said would happen just before the return of Jesus Christ. It seems as though God has lifted his hand of protection from the United States, and not just the U.S., but the world as well. These devastating events are not accidents, nor are they merely the natural cycle of things. The world is enduring events that are designed to bring about the end of days and cause us to repent. God is lifting his hand of protection from the nations of the world. No, things will never get back to normal. They will only get worse. God controls the skies and the rain. God controls the wind. God has power over the clouds. God has power over lightning. God is in control of all things, including the weather. Through his providence, God provides for and protects his children. But he also permits Satan, demons, and mankind to exercise their limited will to commit acts of sin, evil, and wickedness. We may not always know why evil acts or natural disasters happen, but we can be assured that God is working all things together for his purpose and for our good, as we read in Romans 8.28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. As the birth pains continue to become more frequent and more intense, one has to wonder, how close are we to the rapture and the seven-year tribulation? Jesus, speaking to his disciples about the signs of his coming and the end of the age, declares this in Matthew 24, 12, And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. The Bible tells us lawlessness is the violation of God's commandments, as we read in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Sin will be so rampant and so commonplace in the last days that the love people once had for one another, for many, will be non-existent. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. This is what we are witnessing in our world today. It's been another violent 24 hours across the city of Philadelphia. There have been eight shootings with nine victims. Two died, and that's just since 11 o'clock last night. One person who died was unidentified. He was in his 20s. Police say he was shot once in the head last night on Bridge Street in Lawncrest. Medics pronounced him dead at the scene. The other person who was killed was a 22-year-old man who was shot multiple times in the back. Now to another Weekend of deadly gun violence in America. Manhunts across the country as police search for assailants who open fire. Alex Perez is following the latest developments from Chicago where multiple shootings took place. A violent summer weekend with incidents across the country, dozens injured by gunfire. This morning, the epidemic of gun violence is surging over the weekend across America. In Indiana, a deadly shooting at a large party. Officials say 19 wounded, one killed. We have multiple GSW victims and uh, multiple fights breaking out, any available units to clear. In Lansing, Michigan, a chaotic scene as first responders arrived at this shopping center after a mass shooting. Three people injured, two in critical condition, three suspects in custody. On the West Coast, the Seattle police say they've now recovered the most guns ever in nearly 15 years. This after a shooting near a community event left five injured and two in critical condition, all of the victims in their 20s. Here in Chicago this weekend, police say at least 47 were shot, five fatally. 
One of those shootings, police say, injured eight women and killed a 21-year-old female. Authorities say a group of women were gathered outside an event when a black Jeep drove by and opened fire. And unfortunately, the number of mass shootings continues to climb at least 418 so far this year compared to about 259 at this point last year. With the horrible mass shootings taking place weekly in the United States, we need to answer the question, why do mass shootings keep happening in America? What does this meaningless violence mean? Will it get worse and worse as the time of Christ's return draws near? If we think that things are going to get better and that mankind will solve this problem for less violence, we are fooling ourselves. The Bible indicates otherwise. The simple answer to why do mass shootings keep happening in America is, God is being expelled from the essence of American society. Through Supreme Court decisions starting in 1962, God is being expelled from America. 1962, Engel v. Vital. The removal of prayer in public schools by the Supreme Court. 1963, Abington School District v. Shump. The removal of Bible reading in public schools by the Supreme Court. 1973, Roe v. Wade. Legalized abortions by the Supreme Court. Although Roe v. Wade was overturned by the Supreme Court on June 24, 2022, there have been over 60 million abortions in the United States. 2013, United States v. Windsor. The Supreme Court struck down the Defense of Marriage Act. DOMA stated that one man should be married to one woman. DOMA is biblically supported according to Genesis 2.24, which says, Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and he shall become one flesh. 2015, Overfell v. Hodges, the Supreme Court case that ruled in favor of same-sex marriages. Contrary to the Lord's commands, America has made it illegal to teach about God and to pray to Him in public schools. America has made it legal to murder unborn children and has legalized homosexuality in the form of God's sacred institution, marriage. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates His own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised Him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with Him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is Accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning. My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready! Get ready!
time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.